Hey everyone, Madly here. Today I'm going to be doing a Photoshop tutorial on how to use the liquify tool. All I've gone and done to start off with is got a picture of a Zlatan Ibrahimovic. You will also have to go and get a picture yourself of any choice, doesn't really matter. Preferably the bigger the picture the better, because then you can condense it down and it won't be as pixelated. Well, blow up even. All you want to go and do to start off with is go to Filter, then Liquify Tool. There's also a shortcut for that if you hold Shift, Control, and X, which I'll just show you now. There you go. And this is what the Liquify Tool looks like. Start off with, I'm just going to give you a run through of each tool and what they do. And I'm also going to run through all of these little commands on the side as well. Right, the first tool is the warp tool. You can also just hold or click the W button to select it. All it does is just move anything anywhere you want. You can just move anything about. Ooh. And let's just reset that. Yeah, it's basically this tool will be used by mainly photographer editors for big magazines and everything just to as you can see there move bits in and edit little things it's very useful on pictures of humans because then you can just adjust things like Ebra's nose here as you can see it's very wonky so I can just pull that in and make it look a tiny bit better there you go, that looks better than before. Let's just see what it looked like before. There you go. And that is how to use that tool. Right. The next tool is the reconstruction tool. This is basically exactly what it says. I can go and do all of this here with a warp tool. Blah, 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 blah. And I get this tool, and I'm just holding it. And it's doing exactly what it says reconstructing what I did as you can see there, just giving it a little wave so it does it a little bit quicker and it does take a little bit of time to do this, that's why you only use it on slight well slight edits so if you do something small you'll use this just to touch it up instead of just going and resetting the whole thing like I do there and the little shortcut to do that is actually if you hold ALT and then hover over the cancel you can just reset it like here I just show there you go right so that was the reconstruction tool you can also just hit R to uh, quick select that tool the next tool is the pucker tool which you can just slap it tap S4 all it does is condense the image into a certain point where you hover over and you can adjust the brush size of this I'm actually going to type it in because it's a lot more accurate and you don't want to go that high turn it to about 30 as you can see you just get more control and you just what I'm going to do here is get rid of the spots as I was saying just going ahead and removing the spots Basically what we're doing is condensing anything in this little, the furthest circle into that cross point in the middle. It's just condensing all of that into there. And this will be used by photo editors just to get out all the spots like I'm doing here. Any moles, freckles, anything like that that the photographer doesn't want in there and to make them look as good as possible. And I don't know why I've still got his eyes like that, to be honest. There we go. And as you can see, all the spots just come back up. When I've reset that, and the brush size has also. So yeah, that was the pucker tool. And now we're going to use the bloat tool. And that is exactly opposite of what we just did. It bigs everything up, it just bloats it out. Now to be honest, I have no idea why you would use this tool unless you're trying to ruin the person like I'm going to do here 
just absolutely bloat the eyes out, make him look like a bit of an alien. And I see no real reason to use this tool, to be honest. I mean, unless you're trying to make someone's cheeks look bigger, or... To be honest, I have no clue why you would use this tool, but it's a pretty neat tool to use. I'm just going to go ahead and reset that again. That also has a quick fire button, which is B, just to quickly select it. There you go. And yet again, you can adjust the brush size if you want to be more accurate, but I don't know what you'd be doing accurately with this tool at all. That, you can't even really see it with that, but if I just bump it up to 40. There you go, you can see it bloating again. Oh, horrible wall. Right, just gonna hit reset. That was the bloat tool. Now we've got the push left tool, which you can also hit O for. This is a very odd tool, to be honest. It doesn't push everything to the left like what it seems. What it does is if you hold down the mouse, you need to drag it to the left. It pushes everything down, but if you hold it and then drag it to the right, it will do the opposite and drag it up. Now, this tool is very awkward, because it doesn't always do what you want it to do. It can also go diagonal, and it will push up, and go the other way, push down, you know. It's all very awkward, and I've made him look like some weird joker thing. Now, yet again, I do not know why you would use this tool, but you can adjust the brush size again, and the pressure on this one. Like there. I'm just squeezing his nose back in a little bit. I've actually made it really ragged. But, yeah. That was the push to the left tool. I don't know why you'd use that, but use it if you wish. This is the hand tool. You won't need to use this unless you have a very big picture and zoom in. Then you can just drag around and get really close and get up and personal with everything. Basically to get a more accurate view on what you're doing. That also has a hot button, which is H. Like here. There you go, quickly selected. And you won't need to use any of this because you're just dragging the picture around. And the last button, if I just zoom back out, is the zoom button itself, which you can just press Z for, and does exactly what it says. Zooms right in like I'm doing on his eye here, and it does seem to have a maximum of 1600, but I don't know why I'd want to be in that close anyway. And there you go, that's all those tools. I'm going to go ahead and ruin him now, so... I'll be back in a sec, and you'll be able to see what I've done, and I'll give you a run through of what tools I've used. And there you have it, guys. That is my finished version of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I'll just give a run through of what I've, what tools I've used and done where recently, quickly. Right, warp tool I've used on the edge of his eyes to just drag out, make his eyes look a bit bigger. I have condensed his nose in using the warp tool and extended the sides to give it a sort of elven look. Also what I've done for the ears to make him a little bit pointy. I've reconstructed his mouth to make him have a very weird sort of smile. There you go, a little bit more even creepier. I have used, where is it, the bloat tool just to bring out his chin, don't know why, make him look like a bit of a goat. And I've also used it on his eyes to make him look like an alien. And I've used the pucker tool on his forehead to condense his wrinkles. Don't know why, just a bit of fun. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This has been Madly. That was my Photoshop tutorial on the liquify tool. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.